Welcome in, everyone, to another edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, as always, Tommy Brzee. It is Monday, August 12th around here, and we have a great show for you today. We're going to start with my preseason top 25. The AP poll releases later today, so I thought I'd beat him to the punch and release my top 25 before we get there. Definitely a very, very interesting poll coming out today, so I thought I would just give you my official preseason top 25 as we head into this year. Then we'll get into some roster changes that have been noticed by some NFL scouts that I want to get into could be the ones that end up deciding this national title and a couple of big time examples of that throughout the country so we'll get into that after uh, in the second segment then we'll get to the biggest leap that title contenders need to take we got into this last week with the big four as I'm calling them Georgia Ohio State Texas and Oregon we have six more teams for you today so we'll get into that at right in the third segment then we'll have a little bit of fall camp intel some scrimmages happened around the country but also just some stuff from late last week that we didn't have quite a chance to get to then we'll finish it out with Monday questions we'll get to week one part two in this time around we have some big time questions that I'd love to answer for this but before we jump in I do want to remind you all we get tons of questions and comments throughout the show and we also have a super chat now which is the easier way for you all to show your support for the channel absolutely a huge help to us but also to you all we get to kind of have a fun interactive experience here see your name see your question on the screen it's always fun for the both of us so if you look down at the bottom of the chat there on the sports network site you'll see a little dollar sign if you would like to click that add a question add a little uh, a dollar or two that would be uh, absolutely incredible for us I think it would be very very fun for you all as well make this a little bit more interactive so if you'd like to use that the super chat is right there for you also we still have the gsmcpodcast.net site if that's a little bit easier for you as well so either one of those more than welcome to use and it'll pop up on the screen we can have a fun back and forth here but let's go ahead and jump into this thing because the AP poll comes out today we are 12 days out from football officially kicking off I count down to week zero I understand that some people count down to week one but when you have a game like Florida State against Georgia Tech in Ireland in week one or week zero, I feel like week zero is where you want to count down to. So we're 12 days out, at least by my counter. We're 12 days out, and so I wanted to release my official preseason top 25. We'll get the AP poll a little bit later today, I believe at noon Eastern, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll see exactly what everyone else thinks. But I'm going to give you my top 25. This is not what I think the AP poll is going to be, because there are a couple of little things in here that I think is going to be different once it does come out. But this is just the way that I see it. And I have a couple of little ers and ahs here that could could be a little bit different than what some people are expecting so let's start with 11 to 25 that tends to be the easiest place to start and we'll work our way up and we'll start at 25 Iowa State is a team that I just don't think is getting quite enough respect as we head into the season I've seen a lot of top 25s with uh, Arizona slot into that spot or Kansas slot into that spot I think uh, Iowa State's better than both of them I think they're more experienced I think they have the they have two wide receivers that are just outright incredible with Jalen uh, Noel and Jaden Higgins and I think they have plenty of players to make tons of plays. Right above them is their foe, Iowa. Definitely some interesting things that came out of that scrimmage yesterday that I'll break down likely tomorrow after we get through the number of things we have to get through today. But um, that was definitely not the greatest sign for Iowa's offense. But again, we'll get to that tomorrow. This is a team that has as good of a defense as you can find across the country, an incredible linebacker duo this year, an incredible back-end duo. They're going to be more than fine on that side of the ball. If they can take a step forward on the offensive side of the ball, which it doesn't look great right now, but let's say if they do, they can definitely find their way into the Big Ten conversation. NC State is a team that I really love, but they're relying on the transfers, as everyone kind of does at this point in time. Uh, Grayson McCall under center, Jordan Waters by his side at running back, Noah Rogers and Justin Joe Lee on the outside catching passes. All four of those guys really need to hit for this offense to be as dangerous as they can be. Virginia Tech right above them, a team that I've been very, very open about being really uh, into, absolutely love this team. Kyron Jones is one of the most fun athletic quarterbacks you will find across the country. They returned tons of production and talent, added someone like Anais Peebles over from Duke, so did a great job, and I feel like they are a dangerous team in the ACC this year for sure. 
USC is a polarizing team around the country, obviously, with that defensive play. I think they did enough. I, I think they did a great job rebuilding this staff. The personnel is not quite where you want it to be, but it's further along than some people, I think, are giving it credit for. So I do think they have guys to make plays, and then you, the, the offense is going to be incredible. The wide receiver core with Jacoby Lane, Deuce Robinson, and many more guys is going to be an absolute problem for so many people. So really like that team offensively. Defensively, I might like them a little bit more than some other people do. Oklahoma State at 20, I think, is a team that you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a lot of Ollie Gordon pretty much all day. Alan Bowman is the one that really decides where the season goes. However, he's the one that if he can you know, limit the, um, excuse me, uh, limit the interceptions, limit the turnovers that he had a year ago. This is going to be a really dangerous team that could be exactly where they were a year ago playing for that Big 12 title. Oklahoma right above them, they have the two big questions, right? The offensive and defensive line. Feels like the defensive line is coming along a little bit faster than uh, some people expected. The offensive line, not so much. So they'll have to figure that out a little bit and see what happens there. Also, Jackson Arnold is struggling with a little bit of turnover trouble, but we'll see what happens throughout the season. AM, one of the most talented teams in the country. Obviously, the new staff adds a little bit different element to this year, but they got plenty of people all across the field that can make big time plays for them. There's no two questions about that. Kansas State has one of the most dangerous trios in any backfield across the country with Avery Johnson, DJ Giddens, and Dylan Edwards. All of those guys are going to be absolutely huge, and you have J.C. Brown on the outside to make a ton of different plays. I love the cornerback duo they have. This is going to be a really good team that could easily end much higher than 17, could easily be in the playoff as I have them. Miami has so many things heading their way this upcoming season. They're definitely a team that is going to be super dangerous this year. Obviously, the transfers have to come into play but it sounds like they are pretty quickly so it'll definitely be a huge year for them I wasn't comfortable putting them too too high but definitely a team that could be put higher and I would have no real argument with you LSU comes in at 15 this is a team that obviously the defense is the big question but you have the staff changes to help that out a little bit the O-line play is going to be as good as you've ever seen it across college football and then I think Garrett Nussmeyer is going to be really incredible the talent at wide receiver is much better than some people are giving it credit for I understand they just lost two first round guys but they got plenty of guys right behind them that are going to be able to make plays I promise you that so I'm not necessarily worried about this LSU team as many as other people are very much buying into what they can do this year uh, Tennessee is the team that pretty much everyone's talking about in the SEC. Nico Iamaliava, elite wide receivers um, it, all across the field, and the best pass rusher in probably the country in James Pierce Jr. So plenty of talent on that team. This could be the year where they repeat 2022 without that injury at, at quarterback towards the end of the season. So could be a special year for Tennessee, a lot of things going in the right direction. And if they hit this year, it might be hard to stop them going forward. Clemson, I get higher on day by day. It feels like that wide receiver talent, although it is freshmen that I've talked about, I'm a little bit wary about. It seems like the talent is just off the charts, and if you can make plays, you can make plays. doesn't matter how old you are. Cade Klubnik is obviously the one that is going to have to come quite a long ways, uh, more than anything else, to get them to the place that they want to be. A very talented kid that I think is more than capable of it, but needs some strides here pretty soon. You have a Missouri team that is 11-2, or coming off an 11-2 season, returning a ton of talent on the offensive side of the ball. The defensive, not so much. They did do a good job of filling some of the holes on that team, but I am a little bit worried about that defense as we head into the season. I think they have the best offensive player in the country in Luther Burden, so I think they'll be more than fine, but if there's something that could torpedo this, it is the defensive side of the ball. Then you have Michigan at 11, just missing out on the top 10. The QB situation continues to take shape, but overall, I'm still a little bit worried about them offensively. I think the defense is going to be elite. I have very few questions there. The back end might be a little bit of a worry but overall I'm not necessarily super worried there interior defensive line is going to be as good as there is across the country so they're going to have plenty at their disposal plain and simple there's no two ways about that but that's my 11 to 25 definitely a very narrow a list that can definitely bounce around quite a bit uh, a list that you know you could have a couple of teams slotted a couple of different ways and I really wouldn't argue with you too much there's definitely some mobility here but let's get into my top 10 as I see it and Let's start with the Florida State Seminoles. I think this is a team that, again, another team that I get higher and higher on as we get close to the season because it sounds like DJ is starting to come along a little bit further in that offense than 
I once had thought he did, uh, would. Obviously, nothing really matters until we uh, put toe to the letter, leather and really get going this year, but Florida State is going to be an incredible team, a really, really awesome defense. They'll have plenty at their disposal to play really good football this year. And then you have a Penn State team that I think has a ton at their disposal. The pass rush that they're going to have is going to be absolutely out of the world, out of this world. They did a great job uh, replacing guys like Kalen King and Johnny Dixon through the portal. Brought in AJ Harris from UGA, who's going to be a huge player for them. The big thing here is that guy in the picture. If Drew Aller can hit, this team is really dangerous. He has so much arm talent, he has so much ability, but. When he can play in those big time games, that is the big time issue, right? That's the one where you you turn on those games when you're used to seeing Penn State play really clean football, and they look like they don't really belong on the field with the other team. And that's the big time stretch they need to make this upcoming year. In fact, we'll talk about that um, in a, a couple of segments here. But definitely a team that has a lot of danger to it. Definitely a team that can make a lot of noise. But still, some questions there that you'd like to uh, to have a little bit more firm of answers uh, on as you head into the season. Utah, I have at number eight. I think there's a very, very undervalued team just because they're very not variable. Um, I, that was a weird sentence, but you know what I'm saying. There's definitely not a lot of variance here for what can happen as long as that guy's on the field. Cam Rising is one of those guys that whenever he's on the field, they win conference titles. That's just kind of the way it's gone the last couple of years. But last year, obviously, had the injury trouble, has had it really throughout his career. And if he can come back full strength, be on the field the entire year, this is going to be a really hard team to beat, plain and simple. Now, that's a big question mark, and we'll get into that in a couple of segments here. But um, let's continue on here. Notre Dame is a team that the defense is going to be out of this world. When you have Howard Cross, Riley Mills up in the interior, you have Xavier Watts and Benjamin Morrison on the back end, you're going to be really impressive. There's no two ways about that. The offense seems to be making the strides that you need it to make. Riley Leonard is taking full ownership of the offense. It sounds like Chris Mitchell is having a very, very good uh, fall camp as he comes in from FIU. So plenty of talent. There's no two ways about that. It feels like a lot of things are coming into place. The tackle positions are still a little bit of a worry, but we'll see what happens this year. But Notre Dame absolutely has their sights on a national title. Ole Miss is the team that everyone's watching as we head into this year. So many different transfer guys coming in and one of the more talented rosters in the entire country. But can they put it all together is the big time question. Can uh, Lane Kiffin, can Pete Golding especially put everything together on that defensive side of the ball and make sure everyone's ready to roll? It'll be really interesting to watch. And <clears throat> the only real reason I have Bama at five over Ole Miss is because I feel a little bit more solid about that defensive side of the ball. Now, overall, I don't necessarily feel overly great about either of them. I do think both are going to be good, don't get me wrong. But when you're talking about the difference between you know the top five or top six team, it's razor thin. And I think Alabama has that interior defensive line. I think they have some of that stuff a little bit more set in stone. Not to say Ole Miss is any less talented, but when you have a lot of transfers coming in, there's always that question. Then you get to the top four, and it's the top four we've always talked about. I have Texas at number four right now. The only real reason I don't have them at number three is that injury to C.J. Baxter. I think that's a huge one for this team as they head into the season. So I do have Oregon at number three. I think this is a very dangerous team, upgraded pretty much all over the field this offseason and is going to be as dangerous as they come. Ohio State at two, I think the only real difference between them and Georgia at number one is the quarterback under center. I think Carson Beck just has to make you feel much more confident than what Will Howard is right this second. That could change fairly quickly, but at the end of the day, I do have Georgia number one. I do think they have the best quarterback in the country. I think the defense is going to be more than fine and be a little bit closer to what we've gotten used to uh, around Georgia, and the offense is as elite as you've ever seen it at uh, in Athens. So overall, it's a really, really hard group to put together. When you talk about the top 25, between 11 and 25, it's an absolute nightmare. There's so many different teams with so many different variables as we head into the season, and it's another reason why the season's going to be so incredible. So just cannot wait uh, to get this thing underway. I mean, there's so many different things to look forward to in this upcoming season, the new playoff format, realignment, all of the different things happening this upcoming season. But 
we're 12 days out from it all being a reality. We're 12 days out from everything really coming into shape and then 19 days out from everyone really kicking off and things getting interesting. So that's my top 25 for now. We will absolutely update it throughout the season, but definitely a really fun season and we're heading in with a ton of hype around so many different teams. So cannot wait for that, but let's take our first break here. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the roster changes that some scouts in the NFL are starting to notice be more and more important as they're scouting kids and as you see some of the big time teams make runs in the college football playoff or just in general in college football in a year maybe these things are what you need to be watching for so we'll break that down right after this so stick with us <laughs> 